And a good day to you from Silvana Pavlovska and in focus with Silvana Pavlovska broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia. Today is the 11th of May 2024 and we are continuing with our uh, series on the Macedonian question and in particular the scholarly work of Professor Dr. Igor Iyanev titled The Prespa Agreement as Cultural Genocide of the Macedonian National Identity towards the termination of an illegal treaty, a publication which came uh, into being late last year. You may recall um, the last uh, session we did, the last video recording, was dedicated to the Appendix uh, 1. We are still continuing with Appendix 1, and we're going to refer to Article Number 6. Here it comes. Number 1. Aiming at strengthening friendly bilateral relations, each party shall promptly take effective measures to prohibit any hostile activities, actions or propaganda by state agencies or agencies directly or indirectly controlled by the state and to prevent activities likely to incite chauvinism, hostility, irreditism, and revisionism against the other party. Should such um, activities occur, the parties shall take all necessary measures. Number two, each party shall promptly take effective measures to discourage and prevent any acts by private entities likely to incite violence, hatred or hostility against the other party. If a private entity in the territory of a party engages in such activities without that party's knowledge, that party shall, upon such acts coming to its attention, promptly take all necessary measures as provided by law. Number three, each party shall prevent and it says DSI Courage Acts, including acts of propaganda by private entities likely to incite chauvinism, hostility, irredentism, and refsi or CM against the other party. Not quite sure what that, that refsi or CM means. Nevertheless, we shall continue. Article number seven. Uh, number seven to sixty-five. So, number one under Article number seven, the parties acknowledge that their respective understanding of the terms Macedonia and Macedonian refers to a different historical context and cultural heritage. Two, when reference is made to the first party, these terms denote not only the area and people of the northern region of the first party but also their attributes as well as the Hellenic civilization, history, culture, and heritage of that region from antiquity to present day. Major concern. Number three, when reference is made to the second party, these terms denote its territory, language, people, and their attributes with their own history, culture, and heritage, distinctly different from those referred to under Article 7, Paragraph two. Four, the second party notes that its official language, the Macedonian language, is within the group of South Slavic languages. 
Unbelievable that they should be this disgusting language and where it belongs to. The parties note that the official language and other attributes of the second party are not related to the ancient Hellenic civilization, history, culture, and heritage of the northern region of the first party. Nothing in this agreement is intended to denigrate in any way or to alter or affect the usage by the citizens of either party. You have to be kidding, is Silvana's commentary. Article number eight, one. If either party believes one or more symbols constituting part of its historic or cultural patrimony is being used by the other party, it shall bring such alleged dues to the attention of the other party, and the other party shall take appropriate corrective action to effectively address the issue and ensure respect for the said uh, patrimony. Number two, within each six months following the entry into force of this agreement, the second party shall review the status of monuments. Now, second party, I remind you, is making reference to the Republic of Macedonia, which according to the Greeks is now the Republic of North Macedonia, but it isn't to the Macedonian people, and it will never be. So let's repeat number two under Article 8. Within six months following the entry into force of this agreement, the second party shall review the status of monuments, public buildings, and infrastructures on its territory. And insofar as they refer in any way to ancient Hellenic history and civilization constituting an integral component of the historic or cultural patrimony of the first party shall take appropriate corrective action to effectively address the issue and ensure respect for the said patrimony. I ask, where is the evidence? Can the Hellenic Republic provide evidence before making such demands and uh, enforcing this agreement, which is a one-sided partial agreement, unfortunately signed by those who were in power in the Republic of Macedonia, who, as we've learned throughout this um, literary work, throughout this scholarly work by Professor Dr. Igoriane, that they didn't know what they were signing, and nor did they bother to get advice from someone who knew what it was they were signing to. Mm. Yes, number three of uh, Article 8. The second party shall not use again in any way and in all its forms the symbol formerly displayed on its former national flag. This is interference, gross interference. You cannot use the symbol displayed on the national Macedonian flag. Within six months of the entry into force of this agreement, so there's a time frame, six months. Six months of the entry into force of this agreement, the second party shall proceed to the removal of the symbol displayed on its former national flag from all public sites and public usages on its territory. Beggars believe, is my opinion. Archaeological artifacts do not fall within the scope of this provision. Now, doesn't this sound to you like a one-sided so-called agreement? It's not really an agreement, is it? If you have an agreement, both parties have to agree to certain things and give and take. This is not an agreement. Four, each party shall abide by the recommendations of the National Na uh, United Nations Conference on the standardization of geographical names in relation to the use of the official geographical names and uh, toponyms in the territory of the other party, thus giving priority to the use of endonyms over exonyms, whatever that is supposed to mean. Hmm. Five, sounds clever, but is it? We have to find out what the meaning of that is, because if you don't know the meaning of those words, well, how can you sign an, a document? you call an agreement. With number five, within one month of the signing of this agreement, the parties shall establish by exchange of diplomatic notes on a parity basis, a joint interdisciplinary committee of experts on historic, archeological and educational matters to consider the objective scientific interpretation of historical events based on authentic evidence-based and scientifically sound historical sources and archeological findings. Hmm. The committee's work shall be supervised by the Ministries of Foreign Affairs, 
Wow, of the parties in cooperation with other competent national authorities. It shall consider, and if it deems appropriate, revise any school textbooks and school auxiliary materials, such as maps, historical atlases, teaching guides in use in each of the parties, in accordance with the principles and aims of UNESCO and the Council of Europe. I ask a question here. My job as a journalist is to ask a question if I feel it's appropriate and it is appropriate. Um, so it's saying five uh, under article um, eight, mm -hmm. it says within one month of the signing of the agreement, the parties shall establish by exchange of diplomatic notes on a parity, parity basis a joint interdisciplinary committee of experts on all these things, historic, archaeological, all of that really. So have they established it? They may have established it. Who is on those committees of so-called experts? Hmm. In other words, rewriting history. Rewriting history to suit one party over the other. Uh, the committee's work shall be supervised by the Ministry for Foreign Affairs, he says. Honestly, what's got the Ministry of Foreign Affairs? What's politics got to do with these things? Or has it? <laughs> so... Um, right. Yeah, even revising school textbooks and school auxiliary materials, such as maps, historical atlases. Yeah, just wipe the name Macedonia and then, you know, will you be happy then? <laughs> will you be happy? Those of you who are instrumental in putting this agreement and forcing it on the other party who um, seems not very wise and knowledgeable and has no skills or competence to make any decisions, to understand the knowledge or the content contained in this document, nor did it seek any advice from experts like Professor Dr. Igor Yanev. Mm. In accordance with the principles and aims of UNESCO and the Council of Europe, to that effect, the committee shall set specific timetables so as to ensure in each of the parties that no school textbooks or school auxiliary material in use the year after the signing of this agreement contains in any irredentist revisionist references. Really? In whose opinion? The subjective opinion of the Hellenic Republic and its politicians? Hmm. The uh, committee shall also study any new editions of school textbook. Wow, you know, constantly breathing over you or the Macedonian professors, academics, teachers, all those involved in the education, checking to see are the textbooks in accordance with what the Hellenic Republic's demands are that are apparently contained in this, in this agreement. The uh, school auxiliary material study and any other editions of school textbooks and school auxiliary material is provided for under this article. The committee shall convene regularly at least twice a year and shall submit an annual report on its activities and recommendations to be approved by the High Level Cooperation Council as to be established pursuant to Article 12. Right, moving on to the next page. Six, the parties acknowledge that the above mentioned mutually accepted solutions which have derived from the negotiations will contribute to the definitive establishment of peaceful and good neighborly relations in the region in accordance with the United Nations Security Council resolutions 817, 1993 and 845, 1993. Now, uh, when we went through the uh, agreement um, document and its contents, uh, we learned from Professor Dr. Igor Yanev the problems with those uh, resolutions from the UN Security Council, the ones that refer to 817 and 845, the crucial ones. Next, intensification and enrichment of cooperation between the two parties. Article number nine, one, the parties agreed that their strategic cooperation shall extend to all sectors such as agriculture, civil protection, defense, economy, energy, environment, industry, infrastructure, investments, political relations, tourism, trade, trans, uh, transborder, cooperation and transport. They have covered it all. This strategic cooperation should apply not only to the sectors included in this agreement, but also to those that in the future may be deemed beneficial to both countries and indispensable. All these sectors shall be incorporated into a comprehensive action plan 
mm, during the course of the development of bilateral relations. Two, the existing CBMs, they're calling them CBMs, cooperation between the two parties, CBMs, shall be incorporated into the above mentioned action plan. Yes, an action plan. The letter shall aim at the implementation of the provisions of this part of this agreement. The action plan shall be enriched and developed continuously. Diplomatic relations, article number 10. Upon the entry into force of this agreement, one, the first party shall promptly upgrade a its existing liaison office in the capital of the second party to an embassy. Really? B, its existing office for consular, economic, and commercial affairs in the town of Bitola in the second party to a general consulate. And the second party shall promptly upgrade, that's point number two under article 10. And we've got A, its existing liaison office in the capital of the first uh, party to an embassy and its existing office for consular, economic, and commercial affairs in the town of Solun, uh, which they've renamed to Thessaloniki, in the first party to a general consulate. Cooperation in the context of international and regional organizations and fora, article number 11. The parties shall cooperate closely, bilaterally, and within regional organizations and initiatives with a view to ensuring that Southeastern Europe becomes a region of peace, growth, and prosperity for its peoples. They shall promote and collaborate on shaping cooperation at regional level as well as inter alia on mutual support of candidacies in the context of international multilateral and regional organizations and institutions such as the UN, the OSCE and the Council of Europe. Political and societal cooperation, article number 12. One, the parties agree to reinforce and further develop their bilateral political relations through regular visits, meetings, and consultations at high political and diplomatic levels. Two, the parties shall establish a high-level cooperation council of, the, of their governments, jointly headed by their prime ministers. The high-level cooperation council shall convene at least annually and shall be the component body as regards the proper and effective implementation of this agreement and the in ensuing action plan. The high-level council uh, cooperation council shall take decisions and promote actions and measures for the improvement and upgrading of bilateral cooperation between the parties and shall address any issues that may arise during the implementation of this agreement and the ensuing action plan with a view to their resolution. Number four of Article 12 says, the parties are convinced that the development and strengthening of people-to-people -people contacts are central for building friendship. Excuse me. Next page. Yes, it continues. So number four, I shall repeat that uh, again. The parties are convinced, they are convinced. <laughs> they are convinced that the development and strengthening of the people to people contacts when they get together on this high level cooperation council and develop plans and all of that stuff. The parties are convinced that development and strengthening of a people to people contacts are essential for building friendship, cooperation, and good neighborliness between the parties and their peoples. They shall support and encourage contacts and meetings between their citizens at all appropriate levels. Five, the parties shall support and encourage contacts between their civil societies as well as their institutions and local authorities including youth and student cooperation activities and exchanges with a view to developing better understanding and cooperation between their peoples. I wonder what the Hellenic Republic has done in respect to these articles on political and societal cooperation, on cooperation in the context of international regional organizations and fora and so on and so forth. Next is economic cooperation, article 13. Having regard to the fact that the second party, that is Republic of Macedonia, is a landlocked state, mm -hmm, the party shall be guided by the relevant provisions of the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea as far as applicable both in practice and when concluding agreements referred to in Article 18 of the agreement. Article 14, 
One, the parties shall further develop their economic cooperation in all areas. Particular emphasis shall be placed on the strengthening, strengthening, enhancement and deepening of their bilateral cooperation in agriculture, energy, environment, industry, infrastructure, investments, tourism, trade and transport. To achieve this objective, the parties shall capitalize on and utilize the existing CBMs, constituting a mutually beneficial cooperative platform, which will evolve into an action plan. Two, the parties shall encourage mutual investments and shall take all necessary measures for the effective protection, including measures against excessive bureaucracy and for overcoming institutional, administrative and tax barriers. The parties shall place particular emphasis on the cooperation between companies, businesses and industries of each party. Three, the parties shall refrain from imposing any impediment to the movement of people or goods between their territories or through the territory of either party to the territory of the other. Well, this doesn't stand, doesn't hold any water. There's constant issues and problems caused by the Greek authorities on the border of Macedonia and Greece. So who's doing the impeding? The parties shall cooperate to facilitate such movements in accordance with international law. Number four, the parties shall develop and boost their cooperation with regard to energy, notably through the construction, maintenance, and utilization of interconnecting natural gas, gas, and oil pipelines. Let me read this one to you again. Number four, which relates to article number 14 under the heading economic cooperation. The parties should develop and boost their cooperation with regard to energy, notably through the construction, maintenance and utilization of interconnecting natural gas and oil pipelines existing under construction and projected and with regard to renewable energy resources, including photovoltaic, wind and hydroelectric. Possible pending matters will be addressed promptly by reaching mutually beneficial settlements, taking into serious consideration the European policy on energy and the aquis communautaire. The first party shall assist the second party with appropriate transfer of know-how and expertise. Have they? Have they? If they have, how many times? I haven't seen anything in the public domain. What expertise does the first party have? Five, the parties shall promote, extend and improve cooperative synergies in the areas of infrastructures and transport, as well as on a reciprocal basis, road, rail, maritime and air transport and communication connections using the best available technologies and practices. They shall also facilitate the transit between them of goods, cargoes and merchandises via the infrastructures, including ports and airports in the territory of each party. The parties shall adhere to international rules and regulations with respect to transit, telecommunication signs and codes. The first party shall do so as in so far as and in a manner compliant with its ob obligations deriving from its membership in the EU and other international instruments. The second party shall do so in so far as and in a manner compliant with its obligations deriving from its memberships in international, multilateral or regional institutions or organizations in which it is a member on the entry into force of this agreement, as well as its membership of the EU following its proposed accession there too. Well, Macedonia is not a member of the EU. Thank you to the Hellenic Republic and the Re Republic or Communist Republic of Bulgaria. Number six, the parties shall seek to improve and modernize existing border crossings as required by the flow of traffic and to construct new border crossings with a view to boosting touristic and commercial flows between them. Have they constructed new border crossings? Let me know. Seven, the parties shall take measures to ensure the protection of the environment and the preservation of the natural habitat in the transborder waters and the surrounding space, and shall cooperate in seeking to reduce and eliminate all forms of pollution. The parties shall strive to develop and harmonize strategies and programs for regional and international cooperation for the protection of the environment. 
Eight, the parties shall support the broadening of tourist exchanges and the development of their cooperation in the fields of alternative tourism, including cultural, religious, educational, medical, and athletic tourism, and shall cooperate in improving and promoting business and tourist, tourist travel between them. Nine, the parties shall establish a joint ministerial committee, another bureaucratic structure, joint ministerial committee in order to attain the best possible cooperation in the above mentioned sectors of economic partnership, including through the organization of joint business fora. Convening at least once a year, the JMC will steer the course of bilateral economic cooperation, the comprehensive implementation of the relevant sectoral actions, agreements, protocols, and contractual frameworks, as well as all future relevant agreements all future relevant agreements. The parties encourage the closest possible interaction between their chambers of commerce. I think we shall end uh, this part of the appendix um, here and now. Uh, when I see you next, we will talk about the cooperation on the fields of education, science, culture, research, technology, health and sports, uh, and the article number 15. So for now, we will conclude this section of the appendix, which is part of the PRESPA agreement as cultural genocide of the Macedonian national identity towards the termination of an illegal treaty. A scholarly publication published by a, a professor, Dr. Igor Yanev, who's uh, the author of many books to do with international law and an expert on international law. Thank you to Professor Dr. Igoriane for giving us the opportunity to make this document public, particularly in the English language, because this document was originally produced in the English language. Um, I'm not aware of any translations. If any, um, we'd like to have a look at them just to check the accuracy of same. Um, so, Thank you so much. You've been listening and watching Silvana Pavlovska and uh, the YouTube channel In Focus with Silvana Pavlovska broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia. Until I see you next time, may you be well and I look forward to it. Bye-bye.